Six months ago, I made a few videos on F-Droid and why you should stop using it. Shortly after the release of those videos, someone sent me a project on GitHub that says in the readme it was motivated by one of those videos. I didn't start using it then, but I kept an eye on the project. Now just over six months later, the project has over 900 stars on GitHub, and it has come a long way to say the least. In my original video, I covered how you could manually add the source for APKs you wanted to track and download to an RSS reader. While this method did work, it was cumbersome. The app I'm talking about today is Obtainium, and it aims to automate the process of tracking and updating apps. While it doesn't solve the inherent problem with F-Droid and third-party app repositories, I do think it provides some viable alternatives to help reduce or even eliminate some of those concerns. As always, you should use my advice and experience as a starting point for your own research. Make sure to test and validate everything you hear, especially if you are considering using it. I'm going to cover a few use cases and then talk about my experience the last two weeks using Obtainium on my main device, a Pixel 7. The demo you see today will be from my testing device, which is a Pixel 6a. So to obtain Obtainium, we're going to head on over to the official GitHub page. All links will be down below in the description box. So we're going to open up our browser, search for Obtainium, GitHub. And this first one here is the one we want. And if you scroll down, we're going to select the Get It On GitHub under installation. We're going to expand the assets. And the one we want to select for the Google Pixel is the app-arm64-v8a. Select that. Download. Download anyway. Once that finishes, select open. If you've never used your browser to install an app before, you'll have to allow this permission. Once you see the install window pop up, select install. Done. And we have now obtained Obtainium. You should now see it on your home screen, or if you swipe up, it should be in your app drawer. Ignore the X recorder. I've had some issues with the built-in Android screen recorder, so I'm trying a different one. You can now open the app. Allow notifications. Notifications are done locally, so there's no need for Google Play services for notifications to work. And I first want to start off by saying how refreshing it is to use an open source app that took design into consideration. I've noticed a lot of times that aesthetics is an afterthought, which is fine, but I think it hurts long-term adoption. I personally have motivation from a security and privacy perspective to use an app even if the interface is less than ideal. Others who might not have as strong of a motivation to use an app could get quickly turned off by its looks. So when I first opened Obtainium, I was pleasantly surprised by the design. The developer is very active on this project, so what you see on my screen right now might not be what you see if you're watching this video in the future, but the general overall concept should be the same. So going through the interface, the first option is the apps. This is our apps list that we're tracking. Obtainium is added here by default so it can track and update itself, so that's pretty handy. We have add app, which we'll come back to shortly. Then we have import export. If you're currently using an RSS reader, like I talked about in my previous videos, there's an option here to import from URLs and file, like OPML. The ReadU app, the main export type that I had was OPML for its backups. So you could perform an export from that and import it to Obtainium. I didn't test this functionality. I just manually added the apps that I wanted. You can also perform an Obtainium export. So once you get everything set up, that's handy. You can export it, save it. And then if you switch devices or your phone gets lost or stolen, you can always import that backup so you don't need to set it up all over again. And the last option on the bottom is settings. I just left this set to the default, but feel free to change anything you might want. So now let's add our first app. So select add app. We can see down here listed are the supported sources. And if you look next to GitHub and Codeberg, those are labeled as searchable. So in the second box here, we can search for an app. In this case, I'm going to search for a new pipe because that's on GitHub. Search. So you're going to be presented with a lot of results, especially for a project that's popular. 
But this first one here is the official one, team new pipe slash new pipe. Just to be safe, I always suggest that you check first to validate that it is the correct one. So let's go to that repo. We can see here, this is the correct one, the official new pipe. So once you validate that, we're going to go back, select the first one, and then press pick. There's a separate section for additional options for GitHub. The first one is to include pre-releases. By default, you should leave this unchecked. Pre-releases technically aren't releases that you should be using, so that's why it's left unchecked by default. The next one is fallback to older releases, and that is enabled by default. And what this option is for is sometimes developers on GitHub do not do their releases correctly, and they might have one release for iPhone and one for Android. And if they are listed in different releases, when Obtanium goes to check what the latest version is, if the iPhone one was released latest, it will see that there's no Android APK available to install. Therefore, this option lets it fall back to an older release, which would be the Android version, and you can then update. That explanation probably sounds confusing, so just leave that enabled like it is. There's another option here for filter release titles by regular expression. Again, this is for edge cases. I haven't needed this yet for any of the apps I'm tracking on my main device. And the last option down here is for track only. And what this will do is it will just track it and will not actually try to download the updates and let you install them. I leave this disabled because I want Obtanium to download the APKs for me so I can install them. And then standard version detection, I just leave that set to the default. So that's the options that are listed. We can now select add. Obtanium needs permission to install unknown apps, allow from this source. Let's go back. You'll see this screen next. We can see latest version 0.25.0, installed version none. I want to install it. Install. Done. And now if we go back to our apps list, we can see new pipe is now here and being tracked. Latest version. 0.25, installed version 0.25, nice clean interface, and as expected, new pipe is installed. So back to Obtanium. So I know that took a few minutes to go through and talk about, but in reality, it only takes 30 seconds to add an app. And now in the future, Obtanium will check for updates in the background and notify you when they are available. So as always, you should be skeptical of anything open source or any app for that matter especially something that will be installing apps on your behalf or for you. So one extra precaution that you can take is install the app manually first from the source and then add it to Obtanium. When you install an app, Android pins the certificate and enforces signature checks for app updates. So even if something malicious was happening with Obtanium, it wouldn't be able to install a malicious app update because the signature check would fail. So as an example, let's go ahead and install DevX5. I know their source code is on GitHub, so I'm going to search for that. I know this is the official repo for it. I'm going to go to the releases and download the latest one. Let's open and install that. So now at this point, DevX5 has been installed. We downloaded it from the trusted source that we know. Therefore, the certificate has been pinned by the OS. So any updates that are installed either manually by us or using Obtanium must pass the signature check, which means that the APK is signed by the developers. So we can see DevX5 was installed. Let's now add it to Obtanium. We can just copy this URL. Go back to Obtanium, add app. Paste in the URL, select add. We can see that it found that DabX is installed, latest version 4.3, installed version 4.3. There's no updates to install. So now if we go back and go back to the apps list, we can now see that DabX5 is listed there. We installed it from a trusted source, and now we're going to let Obtanium handle any future updates. There's a few other caveats or features that I want to go over. So going back to the add app option, we can see here that Malvad and Signal are both listed as sources. So if we select one of those, Malvad publishes their APK on their website. So we can just copy this 
and Obtainium on our behalf will find the APK for us and download it. Select Add. We can see in the background, downloading Malvad VPN. So it's pretty handy that the developer went ahead and built in this functionality for us already. Even though we're not actually adding the exact page the APK is on for the apps listed there, in this case, Malvad and Signal, the app automatically knows where to look. So give that a minute to finish. Once it finishes, we're prompted to install. Install. And now if we go back to the apps list, refresh, we can now see Malvad is shown here and being tracked. So just to show an example of what updates look like, I went ahead and installed an older version of NewPipe. You'll receive a notification, and then when you go inside the app, you'll see a notification next to the app that needs to be updated. In this case, NewPipe. Select the purple download icon. We could see the download. So Obtainium went ahead and downloaded the APK for us. We now select update. And now NewPipe was successfully updated. One of the easiest ways to find where the source code for an open source app is hosted is to use the FDroid website. So if we go to f-droid.org in our browser, and then scroll down, and let's search for new pipe as an example. The second one is the one we want. And if we scroll down, in the section above donate, there's a link to source code, select that. So if we look at the URL, we can see the source code is hosted on GitHub. And if we scroll down to releases, and then select releases, we can see that NewPipe publishes their APK on GitHub. Therefore, Obtainium will be able to download it from here. Now going back to fdroid.org, there are some developers that don't publish the APK on GitHub, even though their source code is published there. They only publish the APK on fdroid. As an example, I'm going to search for the productivity app. The one I'm looking for is the one that starts with a good time, which is the fifth one down. And now if we go look at the source code, again, we can see this one is hosted on GitHub. If we scroll down to the releases, select that. We can see they don't publish the APK on GitHub, only the source code. So in this case, our only option is to go back to FDroid, copy the FDroid link, and then we're going to paste this inside of Obtainium. So now add app. Paste the FDroid URL, add. We can see it found it. I'm going to install. And if we go back to our apps list, we can now see that productivity is installed. And we can see that it says by FDroid. That's because the APK is signed by FDroid. This is still better than using the original FDroid app because we're avoiding some of the shortcomings of the official app I mentioned in my previous video such as targeting out-of-date SDKs. So I know this probably seemed like a lot going through this and everything I explained, but give it a try yourself. It's pretty simple once you actually go through the process versus hearing someone talk about it. It has made my life much easier these past two weeks. I haven't had to manually go and download APKs, install them. The update functionality and tracking has worked flawlessly. I've really enjoyed my experience with it this far, and I plan to continue using it. Now with all that being said, there are a few limitations that are listed on the GitHub readme. The first one listed is app installs happen asynchronously, and the success slash failure of an install cannot be determined directly. This results in install statuses and versions sometimes being out of sync with the OS until the next launch or until the problem is manually corrected. So just be aware of that. If you see any strange behavior, just close the app and relaunch it. The second one I'm going to come back to, and the last one, for some sources, data is gathered using web scraping and can easily break due to changes in website design. In such cases, more reliable methods may be unavailable.
scraping is an unreliable method to gather data. If you've ever used new pipe and noticed that it just randomly broke because YouTube changed their layout one day, that's a similar situation that the developer is describing here. It's not the fault of the app developer, it's just the nature of web scraping. So now going back to the second limitation that's listed, auto unattended updates are unsupported due to lack of any capable Flutter plugin. So before making this video, I reached out to the app developer to see if there was anything specific they wanted me to mention in the video. And what they did mention is if there are any Android developers watching this video, if you could take a look at issue number 25, which will be linked down below, they'd like to get the auto update feature completed before releasing version one of Obtainium. And any contributions to help with that would be greatly appreciated. So like I mentioned, I've been using Obtainium for a few weeks now and it's been working great. I have no plans to go back to the RSS reader method. And while it's not a solution to the underlying problems that still exist, which I covered in my previous videos, it is a great improvement and makes the manual tracking process much more efficient. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out this top one here. And the bottom one has been automatically selected for you.